and it wasn't meant to be for the Golden State Warriors this season as they are likely to be, but for Sacramento, after a resounding victory over the Dubs, 118 to 94, the third quarter was a difference, and it was all Kings for the most part. And Klay Thompson, he didn't score this game. Keon Ellis, what a difference maker for him. Keegan Murray with 32 points, setting tone for Sacramento, and they'll advance to the play-in tournament to take on New Orleans. And the winner of that game will advance to the first round of the playoffs. But for the Golden State Warriors. We enter an offseason that will have plenty of question marks around this basketball team. We'll try to dive into it here on Toyota Warriors Post Game Live with the Hall of Famer Chris Mullen, NBA champion Fessa Zazili. I am Bonte Hill. Where do you want to start, Fezzi Fell? Where do you want to start? Well, in a play-in situation just like this, this is a game seven. So whoever comes in, anything can happen, first of all, but whoever comes in with the most attention to detail, executes the best, and plays the hardest is going to win. And flat out, was that was Sacramento Kings from the start of the game yep. to the end. Defense on Steph Curry was incredible. They double teamed him, recovered back out to shooters on the, on the Warriors team. The Sacramento Kings defense was staunching. That's why I keep telling you guys, defense wins in the playoffs. And that's what the Sacramento Kings did. They did a great job of, of defending Steph and defending the rest of the team. The Warriors just looked lost today going against the Kings. Just more physicality on that end. It was just a really tough game for the Warriors to end on. Yeah, NBA in general is a first quarter league. Whoever wins that first quarter sets the tone. So the Kings come out, they go up by nine in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Miraculously at halftime, the Warriors only down four points, 54-40. Yep. But as you said, Bounty, that third quarter, the Kings dominated. Uh, and we said pregame, without Malik Monk and Herter, that uh, Murray had to step up. He stepped up in a big way. And, and the Kings played great defense on Steph. Keon, Keon, Keon Ellis, Ellis was phenomenal, chasing oh. Steph all over the court. Uh, but I thought the other players surrounded Steph, and they had multiple efforts. When Steph passed out, there wasn't a play to be made right away because of their quickness and their second efforts. Um, De'Aaron Fox was dynamic. So everything the Kings needed to do tonight, they did. Uh, first and foremost, you know, dictating the tempo in the yeah. first quarter and then knocking down open shots. They made 18 threes to the Warriors' 10. They won the fast break points. They yep. were all over the offensive glass. Yep. Uh, so they dictated from start to finish. Anytime the Warriors cut it, uh, you know, to single digits, Three or four times, the Kings were able to get right back to 16 or 15-point lead. With offensive rebounds, second chance points, the Kings were plus eight when it came to second chance points. And the Kings starters outscored the Warriors starters 104 to 48. Whoa, whoa. Aligned it with say Steph Curry, say that, say that Clay time. Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, and Trace Jackson Davis, or if you want to put Kaminga in there, 104 to 48. The Kings starters outscored the Warriors Ooh. starters. That is a beatdown. Yeah, and, and we all know when you get into the playoff situation, rotations become shorter. Uh, so the bench does have an impact, but that impact can only be felt yep. when the starters do their job. No doubt. And the rhythm that we talked about, the Warriors had no mm -hmm. rhythm all game long because Keon Ellis and Keegan Murray taking on the assignment to defend Stephen Curry. What they did, what we talked about in the pregame show, they defended 94 feet. The Warriors weren't able to get into their offense until about 15, 14 seconds left in the shot clock. And by that point, they were just scrambling. That affected Stephen Curry, that affected Klay Thompson, and that affected the Kings' big win over the Golden State Warriors at the Golden One Center. But let's pick it up in the third quarter because as you mentioned, Mully, it was 54 to 40 at the half of the Warriors were lucky not to be down 15 at the break, but they weren't. They were down four. They cut up to one here, and then the Kings just went crazy. They outscored the Warriors by 11 in this frame, shooting 54% 50 from the floor. They were a plus nine from the three-point line, and De'Aaron Fox got his game going, going 6-12 in the frame for 14 points. Keegan added 10, and their stars play like stars tonight, Mully. And you see all these clips, Bonte and Festus, the, the three-point shots created by dribble penetration, collapsing the defense. And, and there's Harrison Bond with a nice pull-up jumper from the baseline. Again, foot in the paint, nice rhythm three. Uh, once they got going, the Kings had all the confidence in the world. Every one of these plays is the Warriors double-teaming on one end and the Sacramento Kings making the defense pay on the other end. you got to talk about the ancillary pieces. I said that before the game. Sabonis, Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes, each one of them were just attacking on the offensive end. As soon as De'Aaron Fox got rid of the ball, 
Each one of them was attacking. They were successful. They moved the ball from one side to the other, got great looks. The Warriors, on the other hand, turnovers yeah. really killed them in the first half. We kept saying, after the first quarter, you said, well, the Warriors are only lucky to be down six. Then the next quarter, you're only lucky to be down 14. But they never got any rhythm yeah. in their offense to even get back into the game. This is why you need that defensive intensity to be able to keep the team at bay when the offense is struggling. Now, that's a good point there. Keon Ellis and Keegan Murray give them credit on that name. Harrison Barnes chipped in with 17 points. A great night for the Sacramento Kings. Let's pick up Steph Curry's tape because he had a tough time. He had five points at the half. That's why a lot of Warrior fans felt good. We felt good in the break room saying, okay, down 54 to 40, or excuse me, 54 to 50, down four. Clay has a score jet. Steph only had five. You felt great if you were representing the Golden State Warriors, but it was the Kings night. Pressure, multiple bodies. They doubled them. They tripled them, Willie. They made it really tough on Steph and Curry tonight, and he comes in and finishes with just 22 points, four rebounds, and two assists. Well, right away, I look at the three-point attempts, just seven. That's a key number to me. That's what the really good locked-in defensive teams try to do is limit Steph's attempts, first and foremost. Limit how many times he touches the basketball. Keon, Keon Ellis did a great job of that. And I thought their team was locked in when they doubled, when they corralled Steph. Uh, but just look at the, the attempts. That, that tells you everything about their defense. Well, I look at the assists. And I know in a game like this, when you double-team Steph, those assist numbers are usually the 8, 9, 10 numbers. Tonight, those numbers, were, instead of having assists, you had turnovers yep. for the Warriors. You got to give the Sacramento Kings a lot of credit. They did a great job just being physical. Every one of those 22 points, Steph had to earn them. Mm -hmm. And you saw every, it was all physical, getting to the rim. Three for seven from the three-point line. But it felt like each one of those was contested highly. He had one that he had, was, was it two of them that were fouled three-point shooting? Yeah, he three had a four-point play in this game. It, it was, you know, each one of those, Sacramento made sure that Steph from last year that had 50 points was not going to show up in this game. And we said pregame, when you double Steph aggressively, that first pass out, you know, sometimes that's an open shot, but the Kings did a great job with multiple efforts taking that play yeah. away, making the Warriors work deep in the shot clock. Even when they did get a shot, that was contested. So I think you got to give a, a lot of credit to yeah. their defense. I think starting with Keon Ellis, I thought the rest of the Kings players were locked in on their rotations. Yeah, even off night had a solid night defensively. Davion Mitchell for the Kings. All right, we're going to move on to Klay Thompson here. And what could be his last game? as a member of the Golden State Warriors. Now, we all think he's going to be back, but you never know what can happen in free agency. That was the first shot right Clay, there. Clay has never attempted that many shots without making one in a regular season or playoff game in his career. This was his worst game by far. He had a game back in 2013 in which he went one for 13 from the floor and one for eight from the three-point line, but he has never played the game, attempted this many shots without making one and not scoring a single bucket. It's a tough way to go out for Clay Thompson, who's had a very good season. He rectified the season coming off the bench. He shot at a great clip post All Star break 41% from the three point line and 46% from the floor. But you see that 0 for 10, 0 for 6 from three? That was tough. And the last time the Warriors player shot 0 for 10 or worse in the game was Jordan Poole in 2023. History kind of repeating itself there. Don't want to pick on Jordan Poole or Clay because they both were very good members of the Golden State Warriors. But part of the rhythm that the Warriors couldn't get into offensively, Mully, was disrupted by Keon Ellis, Keegan Murray. That affects a player like Clay Thompson. Yeah, I think the microcosm of the Warriors offense in general, as you said, Bonte, if the ball's not moving, there's not timing and screening, the quality shots are going to be, you know, much less. And, and Clay's shots were all pretty much contested, not in rhythm. The most frustrating thing for a shooter is first and foremost, obviously not to make any shots, but not to get high quality shots and be able to help your team. Uh, and Clay, no, no one cares more about being a great teammate and a great player than Clay Thompson. Absolutely. And coming into this game, you saw the Sacramento Kings just make every shot tough. And this is why the Warriors offense is so is so much about ball movement. Mm -hmm. Because once you get a good shot, good quality shot early in the game, then everything else flows. You've seen that in different games. You saw that with C.J. McCollum against the Warriors a few games ago. He's struggling to start, got a quality shot, then they changed the rest of the trajectory of the game. The Warriors could never get into the flow of the game because in possessions where they could have had good shots, they had turnovers yeah. instead. Never got into the flow. Sacramento Kings instead ran away with it. 20 points off of turnovers on the other end instead. It was just a hard, tough night for Klay Thompson. Obviously, you know he's a shot maker, and the Warriors needed every one of those points. Yeah, we talk about execution a lot on the offensive end, and most teams come in when they play the Warriors. The first two plays that went shut down are Steph and Klay. 
But you got to give the Kings, uh, yep. Keon Ellis, and the rest of the play, the execution defensively to actually be able to put that game plan, put that strategy into play. Yeah, and the Kings blow away the Golden State Warriors. They beat the Warriors three straight times the last two in the regular season. And then tonight in the play-in tournament, they'll invest to take out the New Orleans Pelicans, the Warriors. They face it all season with a plethora of question marks around this basketball team. What is next for the Golden State Warriors? We'll hear from Steve Kerr as the Warriors walk off the floor for the last time in 2024. Toyota Warriors Post Game Live is presented by Toyota. Class leading MPG and more hybrid models than any other brand. Toyota, let's go places.